Hello everyone, today we'll look into the muscles of the anterior lateral abdominal wall. The anterior lateral abdominal wall is made up mainly of muscles. On either side of the midline, there are four large muscles. These are the external oblique, the internal oblique and transversus abdominis and the rectus abdominis. Two small muscles, the cremaster and the perimedalis are also present. The external oblique, the internal oblique and the transversus abdominis are large flat muscles placed in the anterior lateral part of the abdominal wall. Each of them ends in an extensive aponeurosis that reaches the midline. Here, the aponeurosis of the right and left sides decussate to form a median band called the linea alba. The actions of these muscles will be described later. Now let us look into the muscles one by one. First, external oblique muscle. Origin. The muscle arises by eight fleshy slips from the outer surfaces of the middle of the shaft of the lower eight ribs. The fibers runs downwards, forwards and medially. Here, the cut section is taken on the lateral side as the fleshy part is on the lateral side, more visible. Insertion. Most of the fibers of the muscle end in a broad aponeurosis through which they are in inserted from above do downwards into the xiphoid process, linea alba, pubic symphysis, pubic crest and the pectineal line of pubis. The lower fibers of the muscle are inserted directly into the anterior two-thirds of the outer lip of the iliac crest. Nerve supply. Lower six thoracic nerves. Now let us see about internal oblique muscle. Origin. The muscle arises from the lateral two-thirds of the inguinal ligament, the anterior two-thirds of the intermediate area of iliac crest and the thoracolumbar fascia. From this origin, the fibers runs upwards, forwards and medially crossing the fibers of the external oblique muscle at right angles. Insertion. The uppermost fibers are inserted directly into the lower three or four ribs and their cartilages. The greater part of the muscle ex uh, ends in an aponeurosis through which it is inserted into the 7th, 8th and 9th coastal cartilages. The xiphoid process, linea alba, pubic crest and the pectineal line of the pubis. It does not extend beyond the costal margin. Nerve supply. Lower six thoracic nerves and the first lumbar nerve. Now let us look into the third muscle of the abdomen, transversus abdominis muscle. Origin. The muscle has a fleshy origin from four points. The lateral one-third of the inguinal ligament, the anterior two-thirds of the inner lip of the iliac crest, the thoracolumbar fascia, the inner surfaces of the lower six coastal cartilages. The fibers are directed horizontally forwards. Insertion. The fibers end in a broad aponeurosis which is inserted into the xiphoid process, the linea alba, the pubic crest and the pectineal line of pubis. The lower fibers of the muscle fuse with lowest fibers of internal oblique to form conjoint tendon. Nerve supply. Lower six thoracic nerves and the first lumbar nerve. Now the other muscle, rectus abdominis muscle. Origin. The muscle arises by two tendinous heads as follows. First, the lateral head from the lateral part of the pubic crest. Second, medial head from the medial part of pubic crest and anterior pubic ligament. The fibers run vertically upwards. Insertion. On the front of the wall of thorax, along a horizontal line passing vertically from the sepoid process and cutting in that order the 7th, 6th and 5th coastal cartilages. Nerve supply. Lower 6th or 7th thoracic nerves. Support for abdomen. Uh, now let's, let us look into the actions of the main muscles of the anterior abdominal wall. First, support for abdominal viscera. The abdominal muscles provide a firm but elastic support for the abdominal viscera against gravity. This is chiefly due to the tone of oblique muscles, especially the internal oblique. Expulsive acts. The oblique muscles assisted by the transversus can compress the abdominal viscera and thus help in expulsive acts like maturation, defecation, parturition, vomiting, etc. This is one of the most important actions of the abdominal muscles. Third, forceful expiratory acts. 
the external oblique muscles uh, can markedly depress and compress the lower part of the thorax producing forceful expiration as in coughing sneezing blowing shouting etc this is also an important action of the abdominal muscle fourth movement of the trunk flexion of the trunk or lumbar spine is brought about mainly by the rectus, rectus abdominis lateral flexion of the trunk is done by one sided contraction of the oblique muscles rotation of the trunk is produced by a combined action of the external oblique with opposite internal oblique